Hi, my name is Beth Sinclair. I'm from Beth's Craft Room, and I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And I'm going to show you something kind of cool that I've been making lately. Um, I do craft shows, and I'm trying to find something that's not exactly cards, but something with card stuff, okay? These are games. They're pretty much towards a toddler, or, you know, early, early school, actually. Like three, four-year-olds, that's kind of how this is kind of expected for <laughs> because for an older kid or an adult it would be too easy all right i think we all remember this match game okay you have uh cards and here i tell you what i'm gonna do the hip up so i'm gonna show you i also made these boxes now i made 12 cards that are two inches by three and a half and I put the designer paper on the back and I matched it on top. Over here, I've got the three little guys from the hippo set. Okay, I, I did a lot of retired stuff, but I also did a Halloween one I'm gonna show you. All right, see how those two match? See how these two match, those two match? Okay, there's six of them and then they're doubles. So basically, you know how you do this, you flip it over and you mix them up. And then you take turns. Oh, that one, this one. Nope, doesn't match. And then you remember, da, da, da. this is silly, but I know this is the game that, that I, I planned on doing. Because, there we go, got a match. Um, When I was in elementary, excuse me, high school, I took this class called Contacts. I forgot it was an acronym for something, but basically we worked with little children. It was child, like early childhood care development. And... um. I remember one of the things I learned was matching like items is a very beginning skill. And I believe it's the math, <laughs> you know, it's like a pre-math skill when you match things. Um, back then I was using felt and a felt board and making a bunch of little animals look like male and female so that they can match them. And that was my little math lesson. Okay, so it's kind of cool that a lot of stamp sets have three of something because then you can do 12 easily, as you see what I've done. I'm going to show you this one I'm doing. This is my latest one. And I'm using the Playful Ghosts, because I wanted to make it Halloween-y. And it's nice, because there's not a whole lot to color in some of these, because <laughs> ghosts are white. <laughs> so it makes it a little simple, simple uh, quicker to put together. All right, I've got 12 pieces here. These measure, they're basic white. They measure one and three quarters by three and a quarter. Then I've got some Highland Heather. Uh, I did use a lot of paper, it seems like, but I gotta be honest with you. This stuff, a lot of it, a lot of this was scrap paper. Now, why do I say scrap paper? Because when I make cards and I cut things from it, I put it in this little bag and I have a drawer full of all the colors. Actually, I've got three drawers full of colors with little scraps of stuff. And a lot of these I could cut in this size because they're bigger. I also have a drawer of just white scraps. I use mostly white scraps for these. I'm out of that size white scraps, so now I've been cutting paper. And I will tell you, it took two um, eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper to cut this stuff. With very little left over. All right. So, like I said, one and three quarters by three and a quarter. This is two inches by three and a half. One piece of designer paper that is two by three and a half, that goes on the front. Then I've got another little stack of basic white that is two by three and a half. These two butt against each other, okay? Those two are gonna go together. This is gonna go on that. And then on the very back, I've got the designer paper. This is from the uh, Zenias, and these are the same size as these. It's one and three quarters by three and a quarter. So you layer them basically. That's how I got it. That's how I did it. Um, I'll show you a Halloween one that I did. And some of this paper is paper that was expired that I have in sacks. I think this one came from, I used a lot of this one. Oh, this. It's the Dandy Designs, and it might even be in the uh, clearance rack right now. I'm not sure, but it's got a bunch of little colors with different stuff that kind of remind me of Halloween. So I got the stars. Another nice one I noticed for this set 
you can use that. See, it's, it's orange with little stars. There's another one the back of that. That's, you know, current. You can probably get that, you know, now or as long as it's stocked. So I'm going to open one of these again and show you. Ta-da! See, that's how it worked. And also, these are laminated. You can tell they're kind of shiny. I wanted to make them durable. And since it's white and you get sticky fingers and stuff, because I, I, I was going to, I'm selling these, so I wanted them to be nice and durable. So I have an old Xyron machine, which I don't know if you've ever, it's called something else now, but, oh, this is probably 10 years old. It's a, I don't know, my camera's not too big, a Xyron machine. And I got an insert for it that's lamination. So I did it that way just because I'm making it craft show available or, you know, um, quality, basically. All right. And I also did it with that one just to give it a little finished look. But if you're making this for yeah, a child you know or something, you may not want to go on all of that. All right. So what I do is I take two of these. Let's see. I'll grab the pumpkins. I got four of each one. Okay. Two of them are going to be alike and two of them are going to be alike. And these I'm going to make. I need orange and I need a little pumpkin pie and I'm going to do a little bit of pecan pie. That's pink. Oh, and I also a little bit of lemon out. So those are the three colors I'm going to use on these. It's two of them. Here with the stem. Now the stem is the same on all. Because come on, how many different colors can you make a stem, right? I'm only making one set of cards. I'm not going to make the whole 12 on a video because once you've seen one, you, you know, the others are just the same, you know? All right, then I'm going to take my, my lemon lolly and do the inside of all of them. Sorry, I know coloring was very interesting. There. All right. Then I'm going to paint them orange. Oops. Or, you know, orange pumpkin pie. You can use, well, not all of them. I'm going to paint two of them pumpkin pie. Yeah, I could have colored this, but hey, at least I cut them before I did the video, right? Actually, yeah, okay. All right, I didn't want to do all that coloring on, on camera, so I got off of it. All right, so I got those two in that color, and these are Highland Heather, and then I did one more scrap paper with one of Highland Heather. That is going to be for the front, okay? Now what we got to do is adhere them. Um... This one goes on here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to flip it over. All right, I'm running low on this glue too. Yeah, that's my good one. Well, I tell you, I've been using too much glue lately doing this stuff for me. That was, that was the one I just got. Yeah. There we go. Okay, let that dry. This one is the same size as that purple, so I'm gonna just 
cũng bán lẻ And my body that began to sit once in a while. You know, you're not always perfect in cutting them. This one looks pretty good. But sometimes I trim around it. Like if I do this, I see the white, I'll trim it. I've done that in a couple. This one doesn't look too bad. All right, so I've got those three. Then I want this. Oh, not this one. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's too big. This one goes here. And one card of me. And then you just do these others just like that. And if you want, you can do it like this is another way I did it. Instead of starting from the front, I start from the back. I put this on here. Do a couple of them. But I'm going to just do these. And we'll call it a video. <laughs> Three more. Not drop it. You could adhere. What's wrong, my? You could adhere this any way you want. I mean, with as far as glue, you can do sticky tape. You can do stamp and seal. You can do whatever you want. Now this one, I'm probably going to trim a little bit. It's got. One. The purple set showing, but nobody's perfect, even though you know you try to line things up. You know, that one's okay. I never make them too short. I make them a little big. All right. So out of those three, I just got this one. I'm going to just give it a little bit of a shave on the side. And you just use the, the white paper as a guide. Like that. All right. Now, got these to put on there. Uh, when you're doing a smaller paper, you know, a smaller size paper attached to a big one, always put glue on the smaller one. Oh, well, well wrong side. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> Let's see. And Oh, did I do it again? I did it again. Oh, I guess I'm rushing. It goes here. So what I do here, I'm going to let this, this glue dry, and then I'm just going to wipe it off. So I'll tell you what. We're going to just have these two as the ones that I was done with today. These two, I'm going to have to do a little bit. Oh, hold on. I'll put this here. You know what? Where's my silicone mat? Silicone mat to the rescue. I can put that there. I won't glue anything. Okay, so as long as I keep it on this mat. On this one on this mat for now until the glue dries. 
I've got four done. Okay. So then this one, I'm going to glue to the front of this. You knew there was something I was going to put on the designer paper. Hmm? And I'm going to, I made a little sticker that says match game. And it goes up there with my stick and make, sticker maker. Now, you don't have to do this part. And I just called it a match game because it's a nice generic thing. What's nice about these, though, if you don't, if it's a little crooked, you just pick it up and place it down again. And this paper's got lines, so it makes it easier to line it up. Okay, so there's going to be the front of my box. Now I'm going to show you how I made the box. Right? By the time I'm done, these glue will probably, see, they, it, it'll come right off. I just wipe it right off when it's done. Now I have to jump. <laughs> All right, so I've got two pieces of paper. This is actually 110 weight cardstock I got from Joanne's. That's the paper I play with. <laughs> I don't want to use my Stampin' Up! paper for this. But if you don't mind, you can use the, the thick paper for this as well. But if I'm making boxes, I use my box paper. That's all I buy it for. Because <laughs> the, the white isn't a very true white. I like this white better. See? But anyways, I have two pieces here. This one is four and a quarter by five and three quarters. This one I cut four and a quarter plus two, uh, another eighth. And then another eighth the other way. So four and a quarter plus an eighth and five and 75 or three quarters plus an eighth. Then after that, I took a quarter inch and cut it off. So I made it smaller because I want the lid to be smaller than the box. All right. So after you do that, this one I scored a half, a quarter of an inch, three, oh my goodness, three quarters of an inch on each side. And I'm going to take my paper snips and I'm going to cut to the middle fold. Then I'm going to make a little wedge out. This is the lid, by the way, and a little wedge. Before you make the wedge, it'd be good to, to bone fold it. I just roughly folded it before. I want to make sure it's going to be good. All right. Then you're going to fold it up. These little tabs are going to go on the inside. Like they are. Like that, and then that's going to be your lid. And you can adhere them with glue. You can use sticky tape, which I think I'm going to grab some. I just want to put Okay, found my sticky tape. Put on my glue. <laughs> All right. Put this on the tabs. You can put as much or as little as you want to on this. Well, I shouldn't say that. You should put as much as, you know, you want. I'm probably not putting as much right now just because I'm trying to get this done because, honestly, I'm doing this video and then I got to run to work. There. Yeah, I'm going to get on. And then 
and we've got a lid. The box, we do the same way, only because this is an inch, it's a little bit bigger tabs, a little bigger box. I just want it to be big enough to hold 12 cards. And yeah, I did it again. I cut before I did this and did my wedges. I'll do that in a minute. <laughs> There we go. My wedges. I do the wedge part. I when I'm cutting is the bottom of the little tab because I want them to fit down in the box. So I want the the tab oops, to be bigger. You want the paper to the corner, you know, the edge to the other corner. And there we got a box and we got a lid. Yeah, into the box and the lid. Fit. It's not fit, but it fits. I don't want it coming off. That's the thing. So, and your cards will fit in here. This is where I get my um my going away, sir. I can hide in this corner here and I guess it got moved. Oh here it is. I used it, I guess. Now my desk a little bit of a mess because I've been on this frenzy making all these cards. Okay, there we go. Moves on with that one. Like this one, I probably have to read So I don't like the way that's coming out. All right, so, anyways, that's where your cards are going to go. All these little pieces. Put the lid on. And then this is going to go right on top. Ta-da! So that's how I made these. I have the pumpkins, the birds. Now, granted, the birds are old. I mean, they're this is bird's eye. I'm not sure if you can still get this one. This is from last year's catalog. And then the hippos were a celebration from last year. And so were the owls were, too. Not the animals. And hmm, at least you have this stuff. I used hippos, hippo, hip, hippiest hippos, and I used adorable owls, and I used bird's eye. That's what I did to make these. If you just want to do it for Halloween, this one works good too. All right. Thank you for watching my video. Um, hope you get some good ideas from this. And have a nice crafting weekend.